Welcome to the Art of Luthery podcast. My name is Tom Bills, and today I've got a really cool technique um, that's actually very critical to my process for finishing my guitars. And I'm going to show it to you and explain uh, how to do it um, right here in this podcast. So this morning, I was working on this guitar, I'm doing a French polish finish on this guitar, and I'm transitioning from the pour filling stage to the bodying stage, which for a lot of people can be a really tricky spot. And um, if you don't get that transition right, you can make it a lot harder for yourself um, throughout the rest of the process. But if you do it right, then you can set yourself up, set yourself up for a really beautiful finish and a much more pleasant process as well. And um, I'm going to jump in and tell you more about that technique and demonstrate it in just a second. But before I do, I thought it might be important to um, address um, if anybody watching this doesn't know what French polishing is. Um, and just really briefly, French polishing is a traditional way, a traditional method of finishing your guitar using all natural um, materials, uh, alcohol, shellac resin, um, olive oil is really common, walnut oil. Um, there's a lot of different methods, but it's a, it's a really, it's a beautiful process to me. And I kind of feel like French polishing almost saved my life in some ways. Um, I really struggled with the toxicity of the synthetic modern finishes like nitrocellulose. And I actually ended up lighting my house on fire and ended up in the hospital <laughs> from it as well. And so uh, French polish came uh, into my life and, and it took some work to, to master it and get it down. But man, has it been worth it because not only do I have a healthier life and healthier for me and my family, but uh, it made my guitar sound better too. So, I mean, what's not to love about that? It's a great thing. Anyway, if you're interested in learning more about French polishing, um, I've got a free three-part um, series over on my website, theartofluthery.com. Um, you can go check that out. Um, it's called The Introduction to French Polishing. Um, and then if you want to go even deeper than that, um, I have a full course um, a video course where you can learn my entire process from start to finish on French polishing. That's called The Art of French Polishing. Um, I'm going to put a link somewhere around this video, depending on where you're watching it, um, over to a page where you can find those resources and um, find some other good stuff too. So, be, so look for that link if you want to learn more. Okay, so enough about all that. Um, let's jump over here and I'm going to zoom the camera in. And I'm going to show you this technique for keeping these purflings clean and free of color when you're working with a really resinous wood like this Coco Bolo right here. So let's check it out. So where I'm at on this guitar is I've just completed the pour filling, the pumice pour filling, just a traditional pumice alcohol shellac pour filling technique. And I'm moving into, I'm making this transition from the pour filling to the bodying. Of, of the finish, so building the shellac on the surface. And this is a really tricky place, um, and there are a lot of different um, people, people, different people have different approaches. Um, some people will sand the guitar completely after the pour filling stage, which to me um, I think is a tragedy because you've just made this beautiful surface, and if you've done it right, um, you've got this, as you can see, this really nice satiny. Uh, completely filled surface <clears throat> and there's no I didn't do any sanding that's all I did is after the um, the pores were filled I just went over the surface with my cheesecloth and alcohol and you know I kept moving to different places on my cheesecloth until um, so I'm actually removing I'm working wet enough so that I can remove enough finish I can remove any leftover lumps of pumice or um, in this case, with Coco Bolo here, lots of color wants to come out and leave chunks and bumps and lumps and all that. So instead of sanding that off, I can actually remove it with just alcohol. And what's so cool about that is I can actually take, this, take whatever was on the surface and deposit it in any open pores and then just clean the rest off. And you end up with this really gorgeous um, surface. And all this stuff, I cover that whole technique and everything in depth in my course, The Art of French Polishing, that you can find on theartofluthery.com. Um, so I'm not going to get into that so much here, but the, the, the 
specific thing that's a nice little trick, uh, really a critical, important trick is when you're working with resinous woods like this cocobolo or even lots of rosewoods um, and other woods too, but um, is what do you do when you have a really resinous wood like this that has tons of color? I mean, you can see uh, how much color is in this cheesecloth and it, there's a lot more than that when you first start out. I mean, there's just color everywhere. Um, how do you keep these, like in my case, maple purfling lines or even this sapwood clean? And I'm going to show you a little trick that I use to go back and clean that. And again, with no sanding and, you know, no fancy stuff. It's a really a simple thing that I'm going to show you. Um, the whole process starts by when I'm preparing the guitar before I do the pour filling, I carefully seal um, all these purfling lines with a few coats of shellac to make sure that they are protected and that they're going to be able to resist some of that color bleeding and staining that happens when you're using alcohol on a resinous wood. And again, that's in the Art of French Polishing course. Okay, so but what I want to show you is this technique um, for cleaning these purfling lines. Now, what I've, where I'm at here now on this is I've actually cleaned, I've cleaned the back already and I've cleaned this, this line here down the side but I've not cleaned this side yet. So this side is very yellow. Like this, this maple line does not look like maple. It's incredibly yellow. And it's, it's not ugly by any means. And it's okay if, to, to leave color. I like some color. And actually when I went through and cleaned these areas, I actually left a little bit of color um, as it approaches this. So I'm sort of fading it in. I don't know if you can see it better on this side maybe but i didn't make it so there's a harsh white contrast i blend i was blending it so you're like an artist going back if you've ever done oil painting or something you've got you can go back and rework color and blend color and wipe it and smear it and all that and so as i clean this i left a little bit of the darker um cocobolo tones in there because it just ties things together and it also happens to be very similar to the color of my mahogany neck so I'm building the unity into this. All right, so let me just show you this simple little technique. Okay, so I've repositioned the, the guitar a little bit here. And there's a couple of things that you can notice is that when I went back and cleaned, and you see how satiny everything is in most areas here, including this side. Um, but you can see a shine right here a little because I didn't, I, I went with my cheesecloth over here, but I really couldn't work with the cheesecloth properly all these areas so there's extra I mean it feels smooth when I touch it it can be deceiving I think a lot of people probably leave this stuff on the guitar and don't realize that it's there which in a lot of cases it's okay but when you're using something like Coco Bolo that has so much color to it you really want to be conscious of where you're leaving color and where you're not so um, you can see this is a little shiny because this hasn't been cleaned and I don't know if the color is picking up properly here, but I've cleaned this purfling line and I've also cleaned the purfling around this sound hole binding as well. Um, but I have not cleaned this. So this is still very yellow and dirty looking. Um, in, in real life here, especially up in this area here, it looks very yellow and dirty. Um, and I may cut to some still shots, uh, still photos that might show you a little better detail um, too to make this a little more clear. But the thing that I really wanted to capture on video is the actual technique because just talking about it doesn't really show you. And I think when you see how easy it is, um, you'll, you'll be like, hey, I can do that. That's no problem. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking a, um, a paper towel and I'm t I tear it in half a few times till I get down to, you know, something like this. You can size it to whatever you want and then I'm folding it over a few times just to have this. This is just a bounty paper towel. And then um, I'm just going to grab my alcohol. I use Everclear. And then I'm just, it's, this is so simple, is that I'm going to just come in and start working a little at a time. And as I do, you see how much color starts coming off. The secret is not to overwork it. The reason why you can get away with this, because <clears throat> it seems like it wouldn't make sense. You'd be like, well, if you take 
the alcohol on that paper towel and you start rubbing it, isn't it going to dissolve what's the pore filling that work that you just did and pull it out? Well, what happens is the, the um, shellac, alcohol, and pumice mixture that's down in the pores, it takes a little while for the alcohol to activate that. Um, and this is Everclear. So if you're using like 200 proof alcohol or something, that might change it because it may be more hot. Even denatured alcohol might be more chemically hot, I mean, um, and might bite into it faster. But with denatured, I have, I have like a, a little window of time where the alcohol can dissolve what's on the surface and I can move on to a different spot before it's going to go down in those pores. But what's really cool is that, and I just keep switching to clean this, but the thing that's so cool about it is that it's actually, if you do it right, and you'll have to play with this and then just keep changing the way you're looking at it. If you have a flexible bench light, you can move your light around, which you can't see it, I don't think, but you can see the effect of me moving my light. Um, and, you know, keep watching it. Make sure that what you're doing is taking not only cleaning it but you you don't want to undo your pore filling it and it's actually cleaning it and then also pushing that into the pores and this has been so so handy for me to to be using this trick because um, what happens is sorry I have to stop talking sometimes when I'm doing it to make sure I, I'm doing it right but um, what happened to me is I, I had to figure this out when I started doing using Coca Bolo because I really like Coca Bolo. Um, but once you start to realize that you can wipe this shellac and during this pore filling process, which by the way, the pore filling process is the most important part of doing a great job of French polishing. If you do a perfect pore fill with your pumice like this and you take time on these details, then your finish is going to be amazing and it's going to be so much easier because you're not wrestling wrestling with pores and issues after there's a body coat on is really a pain and there are tricks for that too which I talk about in in the full French polishing course but still if you can address your pore filling and all that properly in these early stages uh, man it just gives you such a great advantage and then when you start realizing um, on a deeper more intuitive level how how this whole thing works and how the pore filling is actually the opposite of the bodying. The pore filling, you work wet, you tear it off the surface and deposit it in the pores and clean it. And the bodying, you work more dry so that you're actually building. Your pad, when your pad's more dry, it wants to build the shellac. When your pad's more wet, it wants to tear it off. And understanding that on an intuitive level really gives you a lot of flexibility. And um, so as I, I just did this while we're talking here, and you, I, hopefully you can see that that's a lot cleaner. And so now this is dirty, so I just grab another piece like this, a little more alcohol, and I can continue around. But the point I'm trying to get to, and I keep going on tangents, <laughs> is that once you realize how this works intuitively, you're going to say, hey, you know what, I got a... I have a little pore issue um, right here. So you can see I've got a piece of tape here. This is just a little bonus tip. Um, I just put a little piece of masking tape here, and of course before I put it on here, I stick it to my t-shirt and my jeans and get it real linty and reduce the tack, because you don't want it too sticky on there. You don't want to damage anything. And then um, what I can do is I can take my little... Let's see if I can get this in the camera. What I could do is take my little alcohol paper towel here. Now you don't want to rub it too much because it can get linty. So but you'll, you'll get a feel for it. It's pretty simple. And I can, so let's say I've got um, some color or something here. I can put a little tape to protect this from getting color. I can take a little alcohol and maybe I've got a ridge of pumice built on the surface near there. Well, I can take this alcohol and dissolve that with this technique and push that stuff into those areas. And because I'm, I'm addressing this now at the pore filling stage, um, it's so much easier and I can actually grind that finish off right down to the wood if I need to with the alcohol and or dissolve it off 
and then take whatever slurry is resulting from that that was on the surface, slurry of pumice and and uh, shellac and alcohol, and I can push that into those pores and clean this off and flip it to a, another spot until I get this really beautiful, clean, perfectly filled area like you see here with a satin finish. And then when I'm done with this and I've got everything cleaned the way I want it, I'm going to reseal this, these things, protect them again, and then I'm ready to do my uh, begin my body sessions and start building on my surface, which is all clean and beautiful and no sanding was involved, nothing fancy, just nice, natural, non-toxic uh, pumice, alcohol, and shellac. So I hope you found that useful. I know for me that technique has really come in handy. And as I was working this morning, I thought to myself, man, I'm so glad I know this technique. Otherwise, what would I do? Um, and that's when it occurred to me, maybe I should turn the camera on and share it with you. So I'm hoping it's gonna be really helpful and useful for you. Uh, to help you build better guitars. Remember to look for the link on this page, click over to theartofluthery.com and get those other free resources and check everything else, else out over there. And if you want to connect with the, the Art of Luthery on um, Facebook or Twitter or wherever you are in the social media world. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.